Welcome to the Stories Are Soul Food podcast, presented by Cannonball Books and Great Homeschool Conventions. Stories Are Soul Food. We're back. This is Brian Cole's Jammy Ride. <laughs> Jammy Ride. It's a late night recording. We're taking for Brian me. Cole on a Jammy Ride. <laughs> and Turning into a pumpkin <laughs> yes, live on sure. air. <laughs> yep. Uh, and I wish we could say it's because we're bringing in our special guest, James Ingerbritson. Say hi, James. Hello. But it's actually because my schedule is insane right now. So yep. we're bringing in. So here we are. James and Nate. We're doing a, <laughs> yeah, we're doing a midnight session of Stories Are Soul Food. We are drinking James's Singleton, 12 year old. Glen Doolin, single barrel. It's good. Out of two whiskey glasses and a wine glass. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And it's it's quite tasty. Quite mellow, it's quite good. tasty. Yeah. It's going to get Brian right through this episode without mm-hmm. falling asleep. And yeah. I didn't know that Brian was a uh, an early bird. An yes. early bird. You know, I don't think I am. How early are we talking? I don't, I don't think I'm an early bird. I oh, think I go yeah. to bed 10, <laughs> 10, 10 to 11. <laughs> That's <laughs> pretty good. <laughs> Okay, that's like a junior high bedtime. You're right. So, <laughs> yeah. so I am an early bird. <laughs> <laughs> it's like all five of my children right. go to bed when 11. when you do. Yeah. Although Rory will uh, hit me up at 12, I'll get a text and he's in New York. So yeah, it's three o'clock, man. What are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And who knew? I never, I never thought of him that way. But we're doing a late that's night funny. session of Stories Are Soul Food so we can talk about well, more Riot. That's yeah. why we have James here. Yeah. As, uh, yeah. It's an well, honor. A director of Riot yeah, it Water. Yeah, James. <laughs> yeah, it is. <laughs> and uh, we're still talking Riot because we're excited about the fundraising for the new- Yep, the investment. The new series. Yeah, the investment. As of this recording. Yeah, what are we at? Right now, we are at 1,142 investors, which is pretty awesome, and $699,303. So, so tonight, while recording- We'll we probably hit seven hundred. Tick over to seven hundred. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Well, we can do that. Million tomorrow. It actually, it is really, <laughs> it's kind of interesting. So when you are selling a book, as I have done for a while, or you're trying to push views on content, so free content, like mm. you know, hypothetically a podcast. <laughs> so you're recording a podcast and you're you're putting it out in the world. And you're not charging anybody any money for it. You're just yeah talking and putting it out there. No, we haven't done any big promotions to try to spread the word that I know of. Yeah, we only care about people who get us organically. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> if you're here, growth. you're here. Yeah. So we have actually quite a few downloads, quite a few yeah. listeners, which is great, but it's mm-hmm. just happened. But this is a new thing for me where we're trying to bring in partner, like true partners, not like street team, not marketers, not organic, anything, but actual investors. Instead of going to financiers and trying to get one guy to say yes, and then trying to figure out a distribution model, which is a whole different startup struggle, you know, an actual release strategy and everything else, we're getting thousands of investors, thousands of studio executives functionally have to give us the green light. And Mm -hmm. so those numbers make me excited. So $700,000 is awesome. We're going to crest a million. Uh, I'm confident we're going to hit that, which would be our minimum to actually move forward and produce. Yep. But having 1,142 right now, people say, yes, green light, I will put my money in this is very different than trying to get a podcast listener or somebody to watch a video on Facebook. You know, it's, yeah, uh, yeah. that's it's putting, a, putting skin in the game. We've talked yeah. about that a lot. What do you want to yeah. have happen? And are you willing to pull it's out a, the, the yeah. wallet? <laughs> it's also in the same way as a studio exec is. With normal crowdfunding, you're just you you want the thing for yourself, right? You're and a consumer. What, what, and yeah, maybe some, you want a T-shirt. Or yesterday, somebody dropped card or something. Yeah, yesterday somebody dropped twenty five grand on it, mm-hmm. and that's not just for them. That actually gets this thing out to so many more people. Yeah. So it's not that they just get a T-shirt or whatever. Yeah. They, yeah, we talked they, they about get this, a, they get a show they get to bless to other exist. people with it. Yeah. So yeah. they invest to make this thing happen for mm-hmm. their family, for a bunch of other families, and then hopefully for them to make some money on it. Yep. As investors. So we'll it is really interesting to watch that and to think, you know, maybe we have, I don't know, how many ever many thousands of people are gonna listen to this podcast. Yeah. 
Mm -hmm. They're listening to content because they're on a, you guys are, you listeners out there are driving or doing laundry or (laughs) doing something uh, that you, you know, you want to actually consume content that makes you thoughtful, that, you know, is pleasant while you're doing something else. And so you engage and multitask in that way. And that's awesome. We're glad to do that. This is such a bigger bite. It's like the the friction of, hey, you should listen to this podcast versus, hey, do you want to invest in a TV show? Yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> that won't like, happen without you. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Would you like to invest in a TV show? We need thousands of people to invest in a TV show. Yeah. Like thousands in order for this to work. Well, can I ask what made you guys decide to make the change to, to a different model? Because obviously you've done it before the yeah. other way. Um, you've done it twice already just with that project. So My what, least favorite thing in the world is the release. Mm. Which we've done different, differently both times. Yeah. And it's not just for film. That's for anything. Just the release of something is mm-hmm. no fun. Making stuff. Mm-hmm. That's fun. <laughs> I like making stuff. I like writing stuff. The actual creation of a, of a new business, a startup business, that's a one-off business to sell a particular thing is not <laughs> fun to me. So yeah, with the first yeah. film, with Right in the Dance Earth, we took that out as a, a nationwide theatrical event. We you know, were a lot of theaters, one night only. Then we had an encore because it was successful. But we did a theatrical release. We had to raise marketing money. We had to do a, a big spend and, and everything else and push it and then try to drive traffic nationwide through theaters on one of two nights. Yeah. And they're like odd nights too when theaters are available, yeah. like Tuesdays or Thursdays or something like yeah. that. You know, it's like Wednesday. I don't remember which night it was, but. But yeah. theatrically, those screens are very coveted by big studios. And so trying to do something like that's very difficult. And you do it and you think, man, we could have reached more people. Afterward, it was successful. We had an encore. And I just thought, I don't want to do that again. So the next time, with Right in the Dance Water, we decided to do an independent screening release, basically. Then we're going to yeah. do a home release. And James, so I directed Earth, uh, wrote and directed Earth. James was on the crew. Mm-hmm. Uh, did a, you know, worked there. Then James came on and became the director on Water. And I still wrote the narration and yeah. still produced. But then we had this film. Yeah. Like, okay, we have a we have a follow-up feature film. Do we want to do that event theatrical thing again and try to drive everybody to theaters on a single single night nationwide? Like just that marketing effort. And the we decided not to. We decided to do it ourselves directly to consumer. Yeah. Through a partnership with YouTube's platform, basically, we jumped there and did event screenings, let people host their own screenings, make the money. They paid a flat licensing fee to host a showing. They could sell tickets as a fundraiser or any number of things. And we, as part of this, we included like adventure books and other stuff. And, yeah. and it was fun because oh, we, we actually did it. <laughs> and it was insane because once it was we, it was, as it was successful... It became brutal. Oh man, the reality watching those numbers tick okay, up on, yeah, the, on the website guys, and look at speaking of jammy rides. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you, we took quite you guys a few. Were up, yeah. up night after night making books. Oh man. Yeah. James and I became printers operating yes. the printing press. Yeah. We squatted Canon Press's printing press. The we binder were, and the black yeah. trimmer. I, think we did three, I was doing manual cutting. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I remember of ten at a time. <laughs> I remember yeah, we did three. It wasn't all-nighters, supposed to be that hard. Three all nighters in four nights. Yeah. For one stretch. <laughs> yep. And I remember 7 p.m. starting on the the book the book binder. And then 7 a.m. came around. <laughs> still yeah. on the book yeah. binder. <laughs> Time I think to go Dane, home. Dane, uh, who's in the room listening, or maybe. Yeah. Who's also been on the crew, who's post production. He's he's over there in the corner mm-hmm. without a microphone, so we can't say anything. He, he's often the first He was also there for all those all nighters <laughs> and yes. was playing Jim Gaffigan really loudly. Oh my word. Uh, all night long, which was great <laughs> at different points, but when I was running a manual cutter, chopping these books. So if your books were crooked, yeah, uh, that was yeah. me. Hand crooked. And you're, and you're shoving your hands in there and you're chopping books while listening to Jim Gaffigan and staying up all night. Yeah. This is because we wanted, we, you know, we built out this package that was exciting and then it was just very successful. Yeah. And so we, we owed a ton of people a ton of stuff and we got it done. We got it out the door and then COVID hit. Yeah. And a, we barely squeaked in a bunch of screenings and a lot of people missed their screenings. And it was, it was kind of like, oh crap, you know, 
first of many bummers as the french say <laughs> <laughs> yeah and i was like oh that was the beginning of a lot of sucky vi yeah. new virology yeah. <laughs> and, public, and, and public policy yes so then the angel studios guys who did the chosen were pitching us doing right as a series which was very attractive to me because it meant half hour episodes which meant more agility covering more of the planet you know we could actually have these discrete episodes and also the release strategy is set yeah it's, done. it's handled it's done we get a yeah, through their app right so what they do is part of their service as distribution as they are involved in the crowd raise and actually bringing in the investors then they build an app where the show will live for free anybody could watch it mm. and then they will license that show onto other platforms and that's where the you know the profit comes in and so li like the chosen's been licensed to peacock and different tv channels and and so on so it gives right in the dance the opportunity to live on networks to live on other platforms and most importantly it gives us the opportunity to spend our time making other episodes instead of having james and i staying up all night <laughs> print books yeah. for suddenly having to be printers because canon was super busy too yeah and i yeah. can't remember what went. we were going to order the books out yeah we were gonna we we're gonna order them in and we were some meltdown i don't know if it was early days of COVID or whatever it yeah. was yeah there there was a lot of a lot of things along with just, just a timeline i just remember us, on that too all of a sudden having to become print managers yeah. and you know yeah. figure out workflows and well i was impressed sourcing. you guys got it all done which it did we, not just look by like brute it was force. <laughs> <laughs> just by brute force yeah everyone yeah. at canon said we wouldn't do yeah, it. everybody bet against <laughs> and, us. James and, and I were victorious. And we said yes. We <laughs> Along yeah. with Dan. Yeah. You too, Dan, in the corner. <laughs> Dan was a big help. So we have basically, that is, that's a very long answer to the question of mm -hmm. why this? Yeah. And it's like, well, you, if in any kind of business growth, you want to replace yourself where you are not at your highest and best use. So wherever other people can do the job better than you can, you want to replace yourself there. Mm -hmm. And it's the same same answer to the question of why I use a publisher. Yeah. Do you want to do? <laughs> do you really want to handle inventory and marketing? Even, even typesetting. Do you yeah, really want to typeset setting. this? And well, yeah. James does. James yeah. is quite good. Yeah. At no, I, I outsource typesetting. <laughs> <laughs> but it's so you you think about distribution, and that is not our strength. Our strength is content yeah. creation, yeah. whether it's fiction, nonfiction, books or episodes or features the the strength is in the creation the, the strength is in the production and the post-production and the execution of the content and mm -hmm. we're not we've proved ourselves to not be super gifted distributors <laughs> we can do it and we have done it yep but angel studios and the infrastructure they bring that they brought to the chosen and that they bring to this is very very attractive and mostly because it can reach millions of people worldwide we have we don't have yeah. the friction of hey if you want to see our movie go to a theater one of these theaters and yeah. we're on 872 screens at 7 p.m on a thursday nationwide <laughs> like yeah you know it's like we're gonna drive <laughs> yeah. everybody to that one thing or you can host an event and put all that burden on people and it was awesome i really enjoyed how committed yeah people i'm were. sure where you have people listening who did both of those things yeah yeah and, and it's and we're for extremely and we're extremely grateful for yeah. them because they've understood the vision of what we're trying to accomplish but with this one if we can get a series made and we're at a you know we have a one million dollar minimum to even take that next step then the federal government won't let us take more than five million this way if we got five we would do eight to ten episodes what we can accomplish with one remains to be seen yeah uh, we'll so see. we'll take that next step and put the next piece of content into production and uh we won't have to invent a new release strategy we will use the highways other people have built and have built with more ingenuity and more skill than we have in that area mm. yeah well i i was also thinking as soon as you allow a bunch of what is it studio producer you mm -hmm. know fellow producers you you get i was reading some of the comments people are asking and what they want of it and <laughs> one of my favorite ones These are good a nice woman asks is this going to show carnivorous activities i don't think that would be helpful that's no it won't <laughs> that's her question <laughs> it won't for example we won't film anybody's thanksgiving dinner 
Yeah. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. It's carnivorous activities. Not, not helpful. <laughs> not not helpful. helpful. Vegan animals only. <laughs> I do. I think I know what she means. Yeah. You know, are we just yeah, going to, yeah. are we going to revel in the brutality? The answer is no, we're not. We're not going to revel in the brutality, but are we going to show the truth about the nature of the world? Yeah, of course we will. And the single most commented upon uh, scene that we've shot, I think to date, we've done some crazy stuff, but the, the single most commented on thing is a water bug yep. drinking a frog. Yeah. I've heard more about that even today on an interview. Yeah, a woman said, "Man, I love this." And she's like, "But man, that that water bug scene really got to me." <laughs> yeah, <laughs> really. Yeah. We've really had people just me. vitriolic about it. Really? <laughs> yeah, and and then we've had a lot of people blessed by it. So and it's, super grateful yeah. for it. Yeah. Why did you guys include that scene? The water bug. The truth, Brian. Yeah, the truth. The truth. <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot of the truth the you don't show. That God God tells those stories. Yeah, he so, told that story yeah. specifically. Yeah. And he, he told the story of that water bug and that frog and these people who had cameras. <laughs> um, <laughs> and so, and then, and then the people out there who are vitriolic about it. Um, yeah. Ultimately, the water bug, the point of the water bug is that, and the point of everything we're trying to do is that the world is amazing and complicated and full of tension and narrative and characters and God's personality and his artistry is everywhere, even in a cow pond. In fact, in every cow pond, there is no there is no cow pond in the world that you could scuba dive in and not find something <laughs> incredible, like truly incredible. Now, maybe it's a six legged frog, which I've also dealt with in a in a local cow pond. You know, frogs sprouting extra limbs and yikes! I mean, radioactive <laughs> radioactive yeah. in Idaho. <laughs> no, here's what it is: is a um, parasite. That infects tads, tadpoles, uh, a parasite carried by frog-eating birds that, wow. like, like herons. It's unhealthy. They, they, poo in, they, they poo into the pond. Parasite finds the frogs. The frogs grow extra meat and extra clumsy. Mm. And they mm. then eat them and retain the parasite. <laughs> and it's this, actually, it's like a weird hunter cycle. That uh, it's kind of like us breeding yeah, chickens, extra fat with, chicken, you know, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Or you know, it's like, and the, you reach, reach a level where it's a little bit dubious. Where you're like, is this okay? Like, <laughs> we're breeding chickens that can't stand up or receive shots every day. <laughs> yeah, like it's obviously the industrial food industry is a totally different topic that we could have problems with in various ways. But this is how the the birds do it. You know, there's a lot of frog eating birds that do this, which is really bizarre. But you go into any cow pond, you're going to find water bugs, you're going to find six-legged frogs, and just as amazing as that, you're going to find actual frogs. You're going to find yeah, tadpoles right. that the whole turn into frogs. Life cycle, like, yeah. It actually, this happens yeah. in every single pond. And so the point is to get kids and families to look at the world differently, kids to run out the back door excited and amped to know that there is magic and craftsmanship of a level unsurpassed mm -hmm. in their own backyard yeah david, and on the other side of the world everywhere right it's yeah. all over the place david attenborough is so fond of highlighting that there are you know four million different species and each one of them has a unique way of living yeah and it's so interesting to me that you know he's 93 now i think 94. Yeah, he's old yeah. And that he spent his whole life wanting to do what you guys are doing as well. Similar goals yeah. of wanting to be excited about creation and so excited about it. But I also just don't get his drive. I don't understand when he sees everything as being so, the, the world as being so one dimensional and pointless. Accidental. How does he get yeah. the excitement for it that he has? I think the same way that an ant gets excited to milk an aphid. <laughs> you know, I, think that, I think God made him that way. Yeah, yeah. Like David okay. Attenborough is another one of God's creatures, and he mm -hmm. made people. Yeah, four million and one species. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. He, he, made, yeah. he made people who are who are like that, who are just driven to discover and learn and have a, have a built in innate affection. Because when you when you watch him talk about the animals, he he talks and speaks and loves the animals, but he always speaks with a great deal of affection towards the animals. He has a, a deep hatred of man. Mm -hmm. And yeah, he has a worldview that's nihilistic and empty when it comes to the overall point of the whole thing. 
but yeah, he's a creature that's like a magpie who collects shiny things. He's a creature who yeah. loves to go find other creatures. And I think that's just, he's a son of Adam. You yeah. Know, he's just, the image of God is on him. He's a son of Adam and he just can't explain it, but it's still him doing it. His eyes are open to that in a way that a lot of us aren't. Like we don't have. Yeah. He's, but he's like a ability. goose flying south in the winter and denying that he is. Yeah. You know, he's a monarch butterfly heading to Mexico and insisting that they're not. <laughs> you know, <it's> like, <laughs> um, he's yeah. acting and behaving like an image bearer. And he's while well, denying that he is. Yeah. And denying that any of it has a point. So I, we really want this in the world. I think there's an enormous market for stuff like this. I think that in 10 years, we'll be watching a lot of nature documentaries that are faith nature, Christian nature documentaries. At least that's my hope. And a lot of them that we didn't make. I think we're going to tap into something in this moment of gatekeeper destruction and decentralization of content. We're going to tap into this enormous market that has never been served ever. And I think a lot of other people are going to realize, hey, do you know Mm -hmm. that 74% of uh, nature documentary viewers are religious? Like 74% (laughs) of Americans who watch nature documentaries are religious people. Oh, man. And we're being forced to watch the least religious. And 0% of (laughs) nature documentaries are religious. You know, it's like, yeah. So you have 100% of nature documentaries are atheistic, while 74% of their viewers are not just not atheists, they're actively religious, Mm. which is an enormous number. Yeah. Man, that's awesome. I I, uh, was hoping to ask you guys for more of the behind the scenes stories Mm. of what it's (laughs) like, because you're, in a sense, I feel like this is something you guys do often is go gung ho after something and figure it out while you're doing it. You're, you're, you're pioneering. And so what is it like to pioneer something that everyone (laughs) else, everyone else has done with far more money funding (laughs) and and like crew. I mean, uh, like I can comment on this first in terms of like James was on the crew at the beginning Mm -hmm. and (laughs) the crew now is a veteran crew. Like, yeah, it's actually yeah. kind of really funny now that like <laughs> our people who've done this have now been places and done things and filmed things that in situations underwater, yeah. on dry land, at speed. Like I mean, we've done so many different stuff, so many different things. Um, and now the, there's a huge amount of experience. Mm-hmm. At the time when we started, there was just <laughs> gumption and just zilch yeah Yeah. there was zero experience and a whole lot of nerve yeah because the thing about the you know we're we're making you guys went to sri lanka (laughs) yeah we we, we started we started with and the goal was to start to for the same philosophical reason that i explained earlier with the water bug to start close and then have the film travel farther and farther away so Mm -hmm. we we start with you know gordon (laughs) dr g as our on-camera narrator in the palouse and we move until we were literally as far away as you can get just about on the planet. We got all the way to Sri Lanka and the Indian Ocean. Yeah. And, you know, just marching in, like, once you've earned your appreciation of the local, you know, we get all the way out to the exotic and the crazy. But we had no idea what we were doing. It was just, yeah. it was just chaos and adaptation. <laughs> and uh, just like us doing a, a release where James and I had to stay up three nights in a row. <laughs> Uh, to try to meet the the needs of everybody who had licensed the show to do screenings and they all wanted these books thing that we'd promised yeah that then we couldn't outsource you just decide you just have to decide that we're going to go until we succeed yeah. and we're and failure is not an option like we cannot yeah. we cannot fail you have to close yourself off completely from the possibility of failing just take it yeah. off the table and only look at different routes to succeeding like, and, and as things, and you're deciding between routes to success, and then as bad stuff happens and you get closed off from, from those routes, yeah, you have to find the next route to success. So one of my favorite clips in Ride the Dance Earth is uh, the snakes, co- the cobra at the end, biting the water balloon, you know, like playing, playing with cobras. And we wanted to kind of do a little bit of a fulfillment and a gospel promise of the future. Mm-hmm. We wanted to find these snakes and we wanted to play with them. You know, 
we wanted to put our put our hand in the den basically yeah. well that day with the water balloons that was the day i got food poisoning in, <laughs> in, in sri lanka yeah. <laughs> it's like oh, and we man. Been this is what this. i wanted to hear so there's all these oh. we had all these snakes available to us to work with and i got to see them all and film them all and like this initial like day one of that uh phase of production and then i ate something at the nicest place we stayed the whole time <laughs> and was just obliterated the next day i mean the next day yeah. and so it's really quickly like tap to like just who's in charge and it became chaotic i was gone i was the director and so the whole crew goes with gordon and gordon has thoughts and james has thoughts and dane has <laughs> thoughts and everybody's trying to and the shot collar's missing you know it's like yeah, yeah. so they just have to adapt and overcome so yeah there's nobody to just make a decision and so you, you have to get there. You have to adapt and overcome. The Sri Lankan government said we couldn't put a drone in the air. <laughs> so we had to adapt and overcome. We had to distract their government monitor and get the drone in the air uh, when he wasn't paying attention. <laughs> yeah. No, I cannot tell you how many times I've been sitting there with a camera just being just asking myself, what are we doing here? <laughs> and I have no idea. This is that none of this. James relates. gets way more discouraged than yeah. me. <laughs> no, no, it's something that that's it's been a personal journey too to watch like just the gut wrenching like we have no idea what we're doing. This is not this none of this relates to any nature doc I've ever seen. Like, yeah. There's a guy standing in the background and do I crop him out? Do I leave him in? You know? There's a car driving by the pond or whatever. You know, there's just none of and that's what is great is we figured out a way to kind of do the same thing but break the mold. Yeah. and have a lot more fun doing it and work around our limitations that way and just there's not a lot of people who have now have the videography experience that james does yeah it's wild it's actually a very yeah. small club i don't yeah to be I, doing yeah. that love that level of adventure slash nature that resume doing. would be pretty sweet with the jungle yeah. filming underwater filming yeah. shark filming i know, <laughs> I, know <it's laughs> nice. I remember as a kid watching planet earth and just this moment clicked when i realized somebody was behind the camera filming that and it was a polar bear underwater and just and somebody's sitting there in a dry suit you know <laughs> just waiting for that polar bear you know trying to figure it out and that's it's a weird place to be the only skill you actually use now. biceps for watching <laughs> yeah, and holding yeah, the camera yeah, underwater. Yeah. but it, it is really when you set out to do something like this it can be really overwhelming <laughs> but there's yeah. there's no point in being overwhelmed you just you are a hobbit walking out your front door and the goal is to just keep walking everybody knows how to walk and the question is can you walk and not quit mm -hmm. yeah. and the beauty the thing that made this whole adventure possible is the you know the invention of the digital camera really because we could learn if we were doing this on film you know, it's like so, you wow. just every shot that you screw up is a huge expense that you're throwing away and you're just buying more film, but we can just wipe the drives and try again and just yeah. keep going. And there was multiple times in that first film where it's like, are we done yet? And we'd look at everything we had and be like, yeah, we're, we're not done yet. We're going like we're sending James and Dane back out. We're sending, yeah. sending Gordon back out. We're going out again. Um, yeah. Like, How did you make that decision to be? I think it was a gut gut feeling for a lot of it it's really it is really tough to know i remember arguing with dane for hours in southern california do we have enough elephant seal footage <laughs> i i was sure we did because we had filmed days straight <laughs> <laughs> i'm sick of these things and, these and things are really, disgusting yeah and nothing had happened and trying to get action was really tough and dane's gut was like no we we didn't get enough and to go home with what we have just just means we're going to come back. Yeah. Just twists your stomach in a knot. So Dane was right. We stayed and we didn't have enough. And that next day, everything happened. We got the fights. We got the, the action. And uh, so, yeah, a lot of times it's a gut, hmm. a gut feeling. But ultimately, it's a decision to keep walking mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. and to not stop until you're actually there. Right. And so we're just going to keep going until we have, you know, we, yeah. we have what we can get. And the same thing with water. You know, we added whole, I was in Belize all excited that I was going to get manatees <laughs> and, you know, uh, not even close. I mean, everywhere we, where I found them, water was fast, water was murky, but the worst part was that they actually get poached and eaten there. Yeah. Oh. So they relate completely differently 
to the presence of boats and people than manatees in North America. And it was to to think like, oh, okay, I really want manatees. I really want manatees. <laughs> yeah. And that was just something that uh, as a producer on that, it was like manatees were something I really, really wanted. We got to get there. And I'm, I mean, it's kind of funny because you talk about that little voice. When I think about the reaction we get to the manatees, like, yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's the manatees resonate with families and yeah. kids and they really, really do. And they were so close to just like, do we really need manatees? <laughs> uh, yeah. And so you guys went back out. Yep. You know, they went found to a Florida, spot. found the spot, found the spot that, you know, known for clear water, known mm -hmm. for friendly manatees. Like we're going to get in there. It's going to be great. I wasn't on that trip and came back with amazing footage. I got to write the narration for it. Yeah. But um, that divide and conquer and never stop, like, yeah, just not yeah. going to stop until it's, until it's good, until it's right. When, uh, Same thing as writing a novel. You're an editor. How, right, yeah. Like, when yeah. you stop sending it back. Totally. You know. Yeah. I was thinking narrative, understanding of narrative arc has to help so much where you think I'm missing this emotion yeah. in my mm -hmm. nature doc. Mm -hmm. And at the cute fuzzy emotion <laughs> yeah, yeah. is a key one for Yeah, for and counterpoints. And yeah. as we, so the water bug scene in Ride the Dance Water is, was such a big decision yeah. <laughs> because yeah. it's an insect and a frog. And if we showed frogs eating insects, everybody would be fine. You know, we could show frogs eating insects all day, but showing an insect eat a frog is yeah, you know, like wait, this is not okay. Yeah, and then and, edit like that, and yeah. put that music to yep. it, and make people sweat and hold yep. shots. It's and then, yeah. but then thematically, what comes before it, and what comes after it, mm -hmm. and does it work? Does it fit? And it really, really stands out. So those are two all star segments: the the mm -hmm. water bug and the manatee. And with both of them, we had to go kind of like the extra length, the extra mile to try to, to try to get that stuff. Mm -hmm. So ultimately. To tie this into stories and why, I mean, we could even just get big picture, like why you should watch nature documentaries with your kids. Yeah. Well, I think that answers Ruth's question. This, this woman who's asking about carnivores. Carnivores. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Like why watch back. it? Yeah. Why yeah. watch nature docs at all? And the answer is your kids are characters in this world and they were put here by an author that you, you want them to know. And he has designed and crafted all sorts of incredible characters and creatures in every corner, like slice it fine, you know, down at the tiny, tiny level in the dirt under a rock, mm -hmm. you know, behind your house and, or go big to the Serengeti. He has filled it all with creatures and he's filled it all with creatures that have received his affection, creatures that he actually provides for and cares for and creatures that he brags about to Job and is clearly pleased by. Mm -hmm. So if your kids are characters in this world, and they are, then they should care about the maker of this world and the other things he made and all the things that that creator gave to them. Like everything that they, you know, your kids are sons and daughters of Adam and Eve, which means they've been given this world from God. Here it is. This is, this is your inheritance. And if they have, you have to cultivate interest. You have to cultivate a desire to know God by means of it. You have to cultivate a desire to know What's in it? What is it? What, you know, what are these things we've been given? But because science is so anti-God and so politically charged and religiously charged in bad ways and has been for a long time, a lot of Christian families just recoil and they act like this is the, the domain of the devil. Right. And this, that, that answers a question that another of, of your, you know, another question investors had is, one lady put it, I can't afford to waste this money. Why, <laughs> sh why, why should I give it to a nature? You know, she wanted to, you could tell she was excited about the project, but she said, mm -hmm. you know, should I give this yeah. to poor people? She literally said this, should I give this to poor people or give it to a nature doc? And I was thinking about that question and thought it was a, you know, it's not an either or. No, poor people watch nature docs too, <laughs> right, especially yeah. when they're free in an app. <laughs> yeah, ex exactly. That's, and, yeah. And, I, and I thought well, I was, it made me really think through, do I think this project is worth it? Is this important? And we don't want everybody's money. I mean, that's, it's not right. impossible for us to take everybody's money. We get, we have a legal limit of 5 million. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I don't know how much we're going to get. I'm comfortable that we're going to get as much as we're supposed to. Let's go the way we, you know, I was, I was in another interview, a press interview for this a guy was wondering why I wasn't stressed out and like, man, if you, if you can be sweating in the field in Sri Lanka, trying to get stuff, 
you know, you're out there and the clock's ticking and you're flying home. Yeah. You know, it's like you're going home and like, we're going to get what we get. Like we're going to, God's in charge and he's going to give us the creatures and the moments that, that we can get. Same thing with the money. And if somebody's doubting whether or not they should invest in a Christian nature doc, they shouldn't do it. I mean, they should just move on. Right. Watch it and enjoy it later, but we're not interested. I don't want investors who second guess it. I don't want investors who regret it. Yeah. I want investors who know why we're doing it, know why it's valuable that this should exist, and they want to have skin in the game and making it happen. They want well, to I think the that's the and- answer is that she she has she sensed something, a taste of something that's different. She's never understood how the kingdom can move outside of a particular ministry. Yeah. Route. Yeah. Which is very normal evangelical right. thing. And, like, and that's there's exciting. Mercy ministries, there's you, mercy ministries and that's it. Right. But this honors God. Like right. we're looking to honor God and we're looking to explore natural revelation. And like and, these are the words of God. And we're we're in the other book. We're you know, we're running around the pages of the other book you wrote. Right. And that includes all sorts of weird lizards and, <laughs> and snakes and amphibians and and investors who are nervous about giving any money to anything that's not poor people. Yeah, mm-hmm. totally. Another 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 money question specific. There's some tiers there that you can invest in. Some yeah. guy wants to know about the tier for uh, an expedition level. He would like like what what kind is that? What's the tier? What tier the level? The expedition is that? level. We have it. I think the expedition level tier is fam. Is there family members? He wants. He's just like thinking excited about this. We actually we actually I think have we've had a that. couple of people hit that tier. Yeah, I think we have. Um, man, what is it? Is it twenty five grand? I'm wondering. Is it 50? Yeah. 15 grand. 15. 15. 15 grand. So yeah. 15 grand. It's up there. That yeah, that 15 grand, you can show up and have an expedition with, with That's Dr. Awesome. J. Awesome. Some people have done that level then, I guess. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. A lot of actually we've had yeah. quite a few people. That's, so yeah, that's, that's gonna be a we blast. do in fact have a tier where we're gonna like, yeah, we we're gonna do this. Just come on out. We're gonna take I've you take you that. on some kind of a day trip. Yeah, I love that about your pro, your your guys' documentaries that they just feel like you're along with. It doesn't feel like I'm behind <laughs> this wall watching everything happen, yeah, but you get to yeah. go with. So this also, so there, uh, that's helped us a lot actually. There's times when we have awesome stuff and we or an awesome animal or whatever and the question is how do we present this? Mhm. Like and then realizing, oh wait, we can actually just be honest in a way that other nature documentaries aren't. <laughs> The so, whale section. The, yeah, the whale section, yeah. you know, like, yeah, we're, oh, just yeah. Sit, we're just sitting here. We don't have the money to be here a long time. Let's see what we get. And just being, like, pulling back the curtain and bringing people with us. Or Herman the sturgeon in the, in yeah. the water feature. Like, we right, got in there. like fish in a tank. Yeah. Well, this <laughs> is like, this is, you know, it's in a, you know, it's cared for. It's in captivity next to, this is the Bonneville Dam? Is yep, that where it Bonneville. is? Yeah. yeah. It's right by the Bonneville Dam. There's in Oregon, there's Herman, the giant 80-year-old sturgeon just cruising <laughs> in there. And they let us get in. They let Gordon get in. Yeah. Cameras get, which isn't crazy. Yeah. And he's there because people try to kidnap him and shoot him and stab <laughs> him. And so he's in this like natural enclosure by the Bonneville Dam. He's too impressive. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and they used to show him off at the Oregon State Fair and stuff. And so when we were, I was looking at the footage, deciding how to present it, looking at the segment. Yeah. When you guys got back. Yeah. It's like, oh, we should just, just roll right up the middle. Yeah. Because it'd be really easy it. to yeah. say like, this, the white sturgeon. Is, <laughs> oh, in yeah. And its native habitat is, and just try to pretend and, yeah. you know, futz with, with backgrounds and, and just have Herman mm-hmm. the sturgeon, like represented as a wild sturgeon. And while he is wild and native, he's not captive raised, I don't think. He's 80. So yeah, they, I didn't, they must have caught him at some point. But it's, uh, it was much better just to say, you know what? He's got this whole lore behind him, this whole legend of Herman the Sturgeon in Oregon. Yeah. Let's just talk about him. Yeah. And that's yeah. been really awesome to, to do that. And it has an effect on people because we don't have to pretend. We're not playing make-believe. Yeah. There are it's times. Not, it's, not, it's not like we're not trying to use artistry or yeah. presentation. And yeah, you know, there's not there's times we're gonna cut ourselves out of a shot or something. Yeah. Yeah. But we but the overall effect is one that we want people to actually be on the trip. You know, they we want we want them with us. And yeah. that helps. That yeah. kind of the word the youth use would be authenticity, I think. Probably, <laughs> probably <for> authenticity. <laughs> the acid wash genes, yes. Yeah. <laughs> it's real. Okay, well, last question, I think, unless you guys have more, but the, the question is, 
other people want to know what what are you how are you viewing an episode do you think it would go more thematic would it be a specific or you think it's going to be more region centric or are you going to figure that out depending on how that's much it's money really going to have? depend on the amount of investment we bring mm-hmm. and right now so if we're starting with an episode we're going to get back to central africa so people who watch the trailer are going to see lots of footage that's original to this campaign mm-hmm. so there's footage that was in right in the dance earth footage that was in right in the dance water but the bulk of it is new footage from you know production during the pandemic from a year and, ago yeah oh, and, exactly yeah. in kenya oh mm-hmm. well, james uh, james is in kenya yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. And so we have that footage and we would basically if we have enough to do another episode we'll go back there and we'll mm-hmm. complete you know something around the serengeti if we have more and we're mapping out multiple episodes we'll we'll map out kind of tranches you know three episodes that are going to tackle this three that are going to tackle that or mm-hmm. it could be by region i th- i think we'll start with regional and then if we have a second season i think we'll start like zooming in on types of animals and either by real broad classification like we're gonna do sections on insects do you know vertebrates yeah. yeah birds you know like th- that kind of a thing so i think we'll start regionally be my guess in terms of ecosystem we'll probably do it by mm. ecosystem and region mm. but that's not a promise i mean it just it depends on what the budget is yeah if we have the green light for the next installment and that's all that's going to be serengeti africa yeah it has to be regional just budget wise your yeah. mo- your money goes way farther doing yeah. one one trip to one spot and getting everything you can in that and spot. traveling around mm-hmm. that's like when we yeah. were in sri lanka we traveled a lot mm-hmm. but we weren't flying internationally we're staying inside you know one country moving through different ecosystems and yeah. so if you're on the serengeti there's a lot to capture right. and if you can just be there yeah yeah it depends on how scrappy we have to get and yeah so that's really the question but so i'm guessing regionally for the first season and then starting to zoom in on uh you know we'll evolve yeah into into focusing on different triggered classifications. triggered triggered yeah, <laughs> evolve, yeah. <laughs> different classifications of animals no i'm yeah i'm so excited to get africa out to the world i mean it's the footage we shot there is is a blast pretty cool and i didn't make the trip and so yeah. i have to so we have to go back to africa that's so true because i gotta, cause I gotta go. make it happen yeah that's true there. didn't some of you almost die in africa james yeah we had a a i think it was a white rhino haven't we almost died in charge us every single I think, yeah <laughs> i think that is true we have almost died. whether we know it or not we yeah. have almost died <laughs> but yeah this time uh we had a, a white rhino charge us uh their top speed's 34 miles an hour Whoa. and this one yeah so they shot it <laughs> <laughs> and now there are no yeah. more white rhinos <laughs> long story short i think dane woke it up from a nap uh-huh. and it did not like that at all so it went over to a tree stump and pushed it over cracked it and broke it out of the ground just to show us that he was upset and <laughs> <laughs> and that he was really strong hopefully the cameras were rolling yeah for that. Yes. they were for that and then he had walked around to the other side and we had the big long lenses um, and those two cameras were turned off. My camera was uh, kind of a wide lens and it, I was still running and he just snaps and sprints toward us. And luckily we were on the, on the dirt road. So our guide just guns it <laughs> and, and Gordon is standing there between, a, you know, with a small sheet of metal between him and a charging rhino. <laughs> and I, luckily i was on the other side of him and got got as much of a shot as i could and uh <laughs> and then he eventually as as we sped up he leveled off and ran alongside us for a little bit and then and then his job was done he had driven yeah. the white man away yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and that I'm was the a only blast. white thing in this <laughs> desert <laughs> yeah it was a good time yeah so Sweaty. yeah, the, that's veteran crew members right there. Yeah. You know, yeah. just getting charged by a rhino. Yeah. And the camera's rolling. That's what I'm impressed yeah. with. <laughs> but yeah, I had to start my camera. So I had to, you know, press the button, jump up and try to get Gordon both in the shot, but out of the way enough to see it. And yep. that was... And you pair that with the need to produce things illegally at times or... Yeah. To, just on the DL. Yeah, times. on the DL, yeah. illegally or carefully legally. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah. Uh, just we have to structure things it's better to ask forgiveness than permission yeah of. or better not yeah. to ask permission or it's you know sometimes our crew ha- our 
you know, they're just on vacation. Yeah, we just travel. Oh, I and see. they are. They're yeah. on vacation. That's what mm-hmm. they are. They're doing. And then we can license that footage later. And yeah. that's all you're allowed to go as a tourist and just film. Mm-hmm. But as soon as you are a film crew, the the cost, the permits, the restrictions, the resistance because you're creation level, you know, like, BBC level. Yeah, it, yeah. it all becomes really problematic and so yeah. sometimes it's like you know what we just got some guys vacationing and <laughs> and they're free after a tourist goes somewhere that you're free to do whatever you want with your footage mm-hmm. and so we send our guys on vacations it's pretty great uh, we do what we have to do and you all can help yeah <laughs> send it's, our people on vacations where they almost die pretty gnarly vacations <laughs> yeah so <laughs> hard working lots of food yeah, poisoning tons of sweat food one of my poisoning. favorite things ever in this whole situation, <laughs> this whole thing was James running out of air oh when my. we were diving. So we were we were diving <laughs> off of Oahu and a yeah. bunch of rookie divers learning how to do underwater videography, which is not simple. They, and, have, they have separate certifications for that you're supposed to take. Yeah. <laughs> that we did not. You can, you know. Yeah. I mean, you did get certified your own way. Oh, yeah, we did. So, <laughs> the, uh, so we're down there and James, we've got a dive leader and... First big deep dive. Yeah, too. deep dive. James runs out, of, runs out of air. Apparently, he just breathes really, really heavily <laughs> when, he's, when he's filming underwater. So, he's on the auxiliary tank from the dive leader. <laughs> and she's banging on her tank, which is that like, okay, we all have to leave now. Because Everybody. We're done now. Like, okay, we're, we're surfacing because somebody ran out of air. And <laughs> I, will, <laughs> I will never forget seeing Gordon looking like i'm coming over like what's going on i see james is on the auxiliary tank and like okay we're out of air and i look over there's gordon who just goes does the okay symbol <laughs> at the dive leader it's like bubbling it's like okay and then just turns and just swims away <laughs> into this coral canyon <laughs> and it's like into darkness and dane yeah. just follows him <laughs> we're like father and son we're like oh man like oh boy like yeah. we're down deep and it's like um, the team is now divided <laughs> James is out of air, so the, I'm just taking sips. So from the, her tank the yeah, to, so the yeah. dive like you guys, we got to surface. We got to get Gordon and Dane because yeah. they're just I don't even. know. I think Aaron swam over and spent like ten minutes trying to communicate. Yeah, like, <laughs> trying to get. Them you've back. never had an epic miscommunication like at ninety feet underwater, <laughs> <laughs> where it's like we talked about this. Yes, we're banging on the tank. We've all we all know what banging <laughs> okay. on the tank means. <laughs> okay. okay, and I'm leaving <laughs> See now. Ya. <laughs> and I'm turning to leave. And it's it's all easy to laugh at, but it's like, mm-hmm. wow, that could have gone real bad. Yep. Yeah. And so could a charging rhino and so could a lot of things. You know, so could food poisoning in Sri Lanka. And yeah, you know, this is man. just so we're down for it. We go and go and go and go till we have stuff. Yeah. And we put it together. And this time we'd like to put it together and just put it out, make it available Give it to um, people. immediately yeah. and have them watching it. And we don't have to have this whole Stay up three nights in a row cutting books for nice. theatrical events that people are hosting. We'd like to give you guys books, but not anymore. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> We're over that. We're over We'd the like book. to, but yeah. But yeah, this is, and the, the last thing I'll throw out here, because this is stories for soul food, is this is, I still get asked all the time, why do you do this when you're a fantasy novelist? <laughs> it's like, and I don't understand how I couldn't. You know, it's just, it's all one big thing it's all one big agenda uh with my fantasy novels or with right in the dance is just an appreciation for god and for characters and story and kids who want to be more interesting better characters like how to make readers viewers into more interesting better people with right in the dance you can watch animals and in doing so you know god better Mm -hmm. than you did before that's straight scripture Yeah. 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 I don't even, I'm not even on the skinny branches when I say that. (laughs) Right. Yeah. 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 You just do. And it's not any more complicated than if you studied every one of Michelangelo's sculptures or if you read all of Shakespeare's plays, you would, you would start to get to know that creator's personality. And the same thing is true with animals and with ecosystems and everything he's created. If you watch the animals, you study the animals, you know their maker better than you did before. And so it's a more direct version of what I'm doing with fantasy novels where I'm trying to awake, awaken imaginations and send kids out the back door to be more interesting people 
and to discover that the world is a magical place. But this is just that focus on the world is a magical place. And there's a very, very interesting and amazing infinite artist behind all of it. So, and this is one of the doorways to knowing him. Mm-hmm. So, so invest. <laughs> yeah, there we go. In, so Get invest. Involved, the, make it end, happen. the end. If you want to, if you have any doubts, don't, please don't. We're, we're really not interested in. Wait till it comes out. Yeah, just watch it. We're not interested in in investors who have second thoughts or wish right. they hadn't. You yeah, know, we'd rather yeah. people who are really on board all the way and want to put skin in the game. Mm-hmm. That's maybe, great. Maybe come along on a day trip. Yeah, yeah. expedition time. That's awesome. Well, James, thanks for joining us for thanks the for late, me. the late, late show. The late thanks edition. For almost dying, but not. Yes. Anytime. <laughs> <laughs> Anytime. Hopefully it can happen again. Yeah. <laughs> it will. Yes. That's the funny part. Hopefully. The adrenaline we'll t- will we'll spike. T- we'll tell my wife after. Yeah, we'll tell yeah. Lizzie. <laughs> we'll tell Lizzie. Stories will be told. Yes. When I'm home safe. Yep. They're all soul food <laughs> after all. Yeah. All righty. Thank Peace you. Peace out. See ya. If you enjoyed this episode, get your Blu-ray copy of The Riot in the Dance Earth at canonpress.com.